This map shows you the Portuguese um, pattern of exploration. Again, this is the Iberian Peninsula right here, which is shared by the Spanish, which is the larger state, and the Portuguese right here. And the Portuguese really began European exploration. They began their explorations down around the coast of Africa. Again, the goals of Prince Henry the Navigator were to steal slaves and gold, basically. Eventually, though, the Portuguese, by the 1480s, come to the realization that there's a horn of Africa, that Af the African continent has an end, and that you can go around that, that horn of Africa and go up to India, which is up here, which was then a, a, an important goal for them. Even though it wasn't necessarily a goal for the Portuguese uh, decades before under Prince Henry the Navigator. So these are the, the, the routes in red of first Bartholomew Dias, who is the one who reached the Cape of Good Hope and realizes that, hey, you can sail around here to, 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 to India potentially. 1498 Vasco da Gama, the Portuguese mariner, does just that, sailing around the Cape of Good Hope. In the process, while he came up along East Africa, he ransacked uh, communities along the East African coast, militarily attacking people, uh, really beginning uh, the development of the destructive involvement of Europeans in the continent of Africa. And he sails ultimately up to India, where the Portuguese will establish a port, the port of Goa. And in India, Vasco da Gama will ultimately return home with spices like ginger and cinnamon, which were very, very sought after sort of luxuries in Portugal. Another look at these routes. So in blue, you can see the route of Vasco da Gama. In red is the route of Pedro Alvarez Cabral. And this is when the Portuguese discover Brazil. The reason was largely that, and this is again an example of understanding ocean currents, because Bartholomew Dias in 1488 had kind of come, and they were always hugging kind of around the coastline. Uh, it was very dangerous for a mariner to sail out into the open ocean. And uh, that was a very, very risky sort of endeavor, uh, because you could lose your, your direction. From, from land, and, it, and that could be a devastating result. But they learned that the ocean currents out here were such that it would swing you around the Cape, up past Madagascar, to India, right here. Well, in passing through the Canary Islands, Cape Verde, Pedro Alvarez Cabral accidentally sighted the, the, the Brazilian, uh, well, what will be Brazil? the tip of South America in 1500, and the Portuguese will colonize what is today much of modern Brazil. Um, in the process, Brazil, as well as Spanish Cuba, become places where sugar, which is not native to the Americas, but sugar becomes grown in mass, and it becomes a major slave economy, and the Portuguese and the Spanish took a massive amount of captured slaves from Africa who were taken onto these sugar plantations and basically worked to death in the period of about three years. In 1519, Magellan sailed all the way around the world. Now, Magellan died. He dies in the Philippines in a, a battle with native people there. But his four ships started, and they sailed down around the Cape of South America and up into, the, up into the Pacific. Ultimately, only one ship and a handful of crew survived, but it was Magellan, who was, that's why I say sort of, who was associated with the uh, circumnavigation of the globe in 1519. Columbus, of course, and you see, if you can imagine, and I'll, I'll go back and I'll, I'll point this out here, where we're talking about. So the area we're talking about, when we look at Columbus is right here. Uh, the Caribbean. Columbus lands first right in here at an island of San Salvador. So that's the area that we're zooming in on here. Columbus made four voyages to the Americas. First, landing here in the Caribbean, 
not far on the island of San Salvador, not far from Florida, and eventually exploring the coast of Cuba. This is the island of Hispaniola, the island that Bartholomew de las Casas writes about. And of course, here is the island of Puerto Rico. And so Columbus explores, he does four voyages, exploring the various islands of the Caribbean and also parts of Central America. Columbus actually died in 1504, believing, believing that he was somewhere in Asia. And, and this is why uh, the islands are sometimes referred to as the West Indies, because he believed he was somewhere in Asia. And he named the, uh, these areas the West Indies. And this is why native peoples like the Tainos, for example, who was a native tribe in the Caribbean islands, were referred to by Columbus as Indians, because he believed he was somewhere in the realm of India. Again, being motivated by that really, really bad map, Ptolemy's geography, that motivated Columbus and allowed Columbus to kind of sell the voyage to the king and queen of Spain, Ferdinand and Isabella. He died believing that he was in the Americas. And it's not until Amerigo Vespucci, um, a little bit later, crosses the isthmus and realizes that there is another great ocean, the Pacific Ocean. And it's not until that time that Europeans begin to truly start to understand that the Americas was truly a new place, a new world that had been discovered. In this sense, Columbus discovers the Americas by accident, but nonetheless opens the door to a really, really profound transformative event that transforms life in Europe, Africa, Asia. It transforms life across the world and carry devastating consequences for the peoples living in the Americas. Peoples, again, that Columbus referred to as Indians because he doesn't truly understand where he, he is. The English were, like other European powers, well behind, even though when we get to the 1700s, the English are, are known as really the world's foremost uh, exploring power. They're the foremost global power. They become associated with the most powerful navy in the world, and they become associated with really the most robust and thorough efforts at global colonization. But early on, the, the British really lagged behind the Spanish and the Portuguese in this area. And in the 15th century, John Cabot was their explorer who explored areas of northern Canada, areas around Nova Scotia, for example, and Newfoundland, this area in here. Uh, John Cabot in 1497 made two voyages ultimately, and again, the second was his last, and he would never be heard from again. Uh, being a, an explorer at this time was a very dangerous endeavor, and uh, one often did not come back from these voyages. But the, the English remained far behind the Spanish and the Portuguese. The early phase of exploration in the late 1400s and throughout the 1500s is dominated by the Spanish and the Portuguese. And it's really not until the end of the 1600s where you really start to see the English and also the French start to become more, more influential global powers. So again, Columbus, 1492, what did he hope to accomplish? He hopes, because of the very bad map, Ptolemy's geography, he hopes to accomplish the establishment of a trade route to Asia, one that would allow him to not be at war with the Portuguese. The reason why the Spanish are not going around Africa the way the Portuguese were is because the Portuguese and the Spanish had agreed to sort of mutually um, accept that as a, a Portuguese domain in a, in a treaty called the Treaty of Tordesillas of 1494. And so had the Spanish explored around Africa, they probably would have been fighting with the Portuguese. There might have been a war. And so Columbus had proposed going the other way, going across the Atlantic Ocean, again, influenced by a map that greatly um, reduced the size of the oceans and of which America was not present on it. So his goal was to establish a trade route to Asia. Ultimately, though, while he doesn't achieve that, he does create really 
he, he's at the forefront, at least. I mean, the Portuguese were significant in this as well, of creating the beginnings of a global overseas trade network that really creates the era of globalization, which is really significant to the emergence of the modern world. Uh, Columbus is really setting in motion, uh, along with some of the explorers like Vasco da Gama, the development of a truly global world system. And what you're seeing here are all of the different trade routes in this early period, okay? You see John Cabot's voyages here up to the north, you see, of course, Columbus's voyages down here. Here you see Vasco da Gama, his voyage up to India. Here is the port of Goa. You see, of course, Cabral's discovery of Brazil right here, Magellan's voyage around the world. You see some of Sir Francis Drake's voyages for the English. We'll talk more about him later. Um, you also see um, some of the motivations why. So here you see, of course, in the Middle Eastern world, the Islamic world, um, the goods that came from China, for example, might have come along the seas to some extent, but eventually they would come in through this re this region and they would be taxed and that raised the price of goods that came into Western Europe. And so the motivation is to have a trade route, a direct route with Asia that could be used for economic benefit uh, of the mother country. So. Columbus fails, but nonetheless sets in motion a very significant process. That process is known because of Columbus as the Columbian Exchange, which refers to the exchange, the interconnections of people, of animals, of plants, of diseases, of ideas, and so forth between the old world, which is all of this, and the new world, this. And the result is truly the creation of a new world. Uh, this collision, as we will see in the next lesson, fundamentally trans transforms life across the old world and in the new world in, in an incredibly profound way.